thinking about your identity, your ethnicity, your gender, wondering if making work function as a love letter would release your potential? Pause, think about it with intentional thought and consider where we go from here. Stay tuned and hear what artist Gio Swaby got to say about how her work liberates her identity, her blackness and womanhood. Yes, womanhood. Join our co-sponsors DomDev Enterprises and Page Investments and our friends at Something to Think About. Post your questions. Subscribe, share, 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 and let everybody know we're alive because this is going to be lit today. We'll be right back. Something to Think About with Dale Happy Knowles. Welcome to something to think about with Dale Happy Knows. What we think, we become. What we radiate, we attract. And what we imagine, we surely can achieve. Let's change the narrative two for two. And this evening again, we're going to have another special bright eyed, pearly, pearly teeth, shining, smiling lady on our screen should be shortly Mrs. Gio Swaby. All the way from up north in the cold climate that warm, like the sun, you know. We got the sun, the new day sun around here in the Bahamas. I guess you got a new new, new sun up there too. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. I'm having a great time. I'm happy to be here. Awesome. Awesome. Well, we're glad that you're having a great time and we hope you have a better time at, by the time as the show is finished. That's our whole purpose in life. So we know you to be a Bahamian, a real Bahamian, you know, um, and your artists and your practice encompass installation, textiles, collages, performances, and videos. And um, you told us that you revolve around the exploration of identity, which we want to tap into somewhat today and see how it can help us all. And so you went to school or at and got your um, BA, a Bachelor's of Art, and now you're getting, you got, just got your Master's of Fine Arts. And we applaud you for that. I never reached the Master's level. <laughs> I was always an <laughs> amateur. <laughs> so Thank we, you. We There's always time. You still got time? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, right. Mm. Right. <laughs> Okay, so you said now that I want my work to function as a love letter for so, of sorts for black women. A love letter. Mm. There's some deep stuff, you know, all these artists. So when we think of love letters now, I think of a personal, unique, sincere story about one's relationship and so forth. So how do you get to the still to say that, to tell others that you love them through your work? Um, I mean, the way you describe it just now was, you know, it really touches on part of what I'm trying to do with um, okay. using a more visual language to craft these love letters. Uh, so the process of my work begins with an invitation that I extend to the person to participate in this uh, in this with me to allow mm -hmm. them to allow me to photograph them and have a conversation with them um, and I think that's where the point of connection starts all of the work that I've made so far has been of um, portraits of my close family members and friends um, mm -hmm. and I wanted to explore other ways or I wanted to explore new ways that I could experience and kind of unlock new ways to express love to the people mm -hmm. in my life. Um, sometimes, you know, this is very rooted in Bahamian culture. Sometimes it's hard for us to express verbally. Mm -hmm. um, I certainly grew up in a family where uh, that, that became a difficulty for us at times to be able to express these kinds of um, feelings verbally. 
And um, exploring that now later into my adulthood, I'm trying to uh, figure out how I can start to do that through my artwork as well. Awesome, awesome. Family is always a good thing, you know, especially when the kitchen is open, you know, we always <laughs> have to do something good. So when we talk about this love language now, this love letter, right, um, you know, we always like we talk about we send it to somebody special and the like. So tell us why do you feel the need for your work to be a love letter? I think I feel a need because especially I'm thinking my, my work is centered at the moment on representing black women. I see that opening mm -hmm. up potentially in the future. Um, but especially since the work is also centered on Bahamian women, I see a real need to express that appreciation and love to them. And for us uh, mm -hmm. here and now, um, I think that the one of the greatest things about art is to be able to create and to share your own unique expect pers perspective and experience in life. And that's where I'm approaching with this work. I was raised by women, I feel in my family. Of course, mm -hmm. there were um, other men and uh, male figures in my life that I really, uh, that, you know, like my father, uh, my brother, who I feel had a huge impact on my life. But mm -hmm. for a very large part, I'm, I'm from a family filled with women. Like I have three older sisters, my mother, my grandmother. I have six aunts uh, on my mother's side. So I really feel I was uh, so much about women. So many women have like raised me and shaped me to be who I am today. And mm -hmm. I wanted to use my work to kind of pay tribute to them in dedication to them. Okay, cool. And so um, in doing so... The significance of that building that relationship is that because you see in the public domain where it seems like that's a void, it's a, a, a something that's missing, or is it for another reason why you choose this at this time in your life? I think that uh, in some ways it is missing. I think we overlook and take for granted a lot of the things people do for us. Um, and even if I think generally, like if I'm thinking about a parent-child relationship, we mm -hmm. often overlook some of the things are um, because it's a part of what a parent's job is to take care of you. Uh, we forget to express gratitude for that sometimes. Um, and thinking about largely in society, in Bahamian society, so much of uh, household labor of raising a generation is placed into the hands of women in the Bahamas, mm -hmm. there's many, many single family homes that are headed by women. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, something goes wrong. The first people we think about to blame is, where's your mother? You know, mm -hmm. like, you know, and uh, we, I feel that sometimes that gratitude is, uh, is missing. missing. And mm -hmm. um, even if it's there, I think it can never be enough for the gifts that we've gotten from them and mm -hmm. for the gifts that they continue to give us through through their lives and through through our lives. Uh, so in my work, I hope to kind of begin to fill, fill in some of that uh, void and also be mm -hmm. able to um, uh, think back in my past and write some of the and write some of the times when I felt like you know that that expression of gratitude and of love was missing mm -hmm. cool you know uh i don't know but i mean men i don't know if you want the men to, to be a part of the raising of the children because I, you know men get too left feet sometimes when it comes to things like that <laughs> but you know we, we, you know we have what? what we can i guess you know I don't, I think that uh, we have many great Bahamian um, fathers, many great black fathers in homes. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, I feel that it's becoming even more and more prevalent with newer generations that um, men are taking on or, or recognizing the importance of being a part of this uh, rearing, like mm -hmm. rearing of children and that uh, it's important to form a bond with your child. I mean, things have shifted. When, I mean, right. women don't stay home anymore or um, 
uh, the, the fact of the matter is that you have the choice to do what it is you choose to do. Right. And if we're both, you know, um, breadwinners in a certain sense, then we should be dividing up some of this other labor equally. Um, and I think that that, you know, it's, a, it's important for a child to connect with, with both parents where both possible. Parents. Mm -hmm. Cool. And so the love letters uh, strengthen partnerships as, as we would look at it, at least it's intended to do so um, between the person writing and the person receiving. And so when we look at that then, um, and you said that your work is to function as a love letter, how do you go about preparing your work to strengthen that partnership between yourself and who you're writing to, your work is directed to? Um, well, the... The work shows up when people see it as this physical portrait that we okay. get to view in an exhibition space. But it really, for me, begins with this process of connecting. Um, I mentioned earlier that many of the people in my artworks are my friends and family. So we have already mm -hmm. had this kind of really, in, in many of the cases, such a long relationship of um, knowing each other, of caring for one another. Um, I think that comes through in the work. But there's also mm -hmm. an intentional process through creating this work of connecting um, of, um, of this part of the invitation for me to represent them in this work. Uh, often the person really expresses a lot of gratitude to be a part of that process. And mm -hmm. then for me, I'm so, I'm just super honored and grateful that they have um, you know wanted to spend this time with me and they've graciously offered to share the space with me so there is a big big part of the work that is about the connection and I think mm -hmm. that's how when the portraits are made and people see them in the final form you get a real sense mm -hmm. of the, the essence of that person rather than just like a physical representation of them you see a bit of who they are Cool. Hi, Karen. Thanks for joining us. Ask, ask this lovely lady in front of me some questions. I know you got plenty of questions. Um, the inquisitive one that you are. So <laughs> as we go through a day now, walk us through a day when you wake up and you're going into the studio to do some of your, prepare some of your work. Oh, what's your thought process through and forming the words on the canvas that you want to paint in this love letter. And I like this love letter, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I'm glad you connected with that a lot because uh, it's the basis of my work. So I'm happy to talk about that. Uh, from day to day, the process is different. I, um, I try to maintain, like, I think an overall, I try to approach my day with an overall schedule, but it doesn't always mm -hmm. go the same way every time because I also want to have like an openness to the process If something's not working then I want to be able to shift that move as I mm. need to right uh so I am a later riser I stay up late I wake up a little bit later um mm. uh, maybe around like nine try to get in a nice breakfast sometimes the breakfast is healthy sometimes it's McDonald's um I uh, try to do exercise again, another area where I am still struggling and trying to make it work, but getting You it, have getting steps it. in your building, right? <laughs> it's a steps in the building, yeah. Okay, so um, for every, every floor, I just walk a flight of stairs. You know what? You're right. I could just take the stairs. I live on the 10th floor, so it's a lot of stairs. No, no, um, you don't have to take all the stairs, but just pick the just number of stairs flight. and just take, take them. Maybe two. Okay, one or two. Mm. I made that. I could. That's that's doable. That's achievable. Mm. It's not. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, so I start in the studio. I'm normally working in series form, which means mm -hmm. um, if I start one piece, I will uh, make other pieces that are similar to that work that uh, can uh, be said to be, you know, a part of the same series in that mm -hmm. sense. Um, so I'm working on more than one at a time normally. I like to have this relationship between two or three pieces happening at the same time in the studio. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, 
all of my work is generally life scale. So being working on more than one, two at the same time helps me to understand if the scale uh, is, is uh, accurate from piece to piece, which can be a hard thing to achieve when you're representing different people who are mm -hmm. not here in the flesh with you at that time. Um, uh, so I, I will maybe have like a, you know, five to six hour uh, work day of trying to like do that physical work of making in the studio. I like to have mm -hmm. some time for, um, because a part of, I was also in school for most of this time too. So I would also have some time for writing throughout the day as well. Um, but I am also a firm believer in getting the time that you need to rest and right. to recuperate because uh, you only have one body, you got to treat it well. Um, because as an artist, uh, our body is a part of, is, is so much of how we create the work that we make. I'm trying to take care of mine. Um, mm -hmm. And yeah, I try to get a reasonable amount of rest throughout the day and not, not overdo it. Yes, cool. Thanks, Naaman. Thanks for joining us. That's my good buddy over there in Grand Bahama. Um, saying keep up the good work. Awesome. So when Thank we you. look at th this pick, um, the, the that this you said life size. Do you say life size or life? Life scale or life size. Life yeah. scale. Okay. So that means like real size. Like if you five for mm -hmm. ten, this is a five for ten lady in I guess tennis shoes or sneakers. Correct. Right. Yeah, so this wow. this work is That's about huge. seven yeah. feet tall. That's the full um, canvas size by about mm -hmm. three and a half feet. Yeah, this lady from Baintown. <laughs> she's not. She's not from Baintown or not as far as I know. Not from Baintown. <laughs> cool. <laughs> so what made you say Baintown? Hmm. Han and the Kimbo. Yeah. 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 <laughs> cool. Yeah. So when you would, these would be, like you said, people that already exist or these are somebody that you had a nice dream the night before and you woke up and you decided to do some things with this. These people already exist. Um, okay. So I work mm -hmm. from photographs to create uh, the portraits, but mm -hmm. they do involve a dreaming in a sense that uh, the clothes um, are made from uh, different color fabrics that they're, they're not actually wearing this color. I'm mm -hmm. um, putting together and uh, creating a new color palette for the clothing um, in the creation process of the portrait. Wow, seven feet tall. You really find you you really hang out with my son Dominique then because I mean I don't I don't know of him to do anything small. Yeah, we all like these. People. Yeah. So okay, now this one. Is, I was just about to say most of these pictures are colorful. And this one has some um, uh, a silhouette, the one on the left, a silhouette with, and then the flowers. What, mm -hmm. What's the mindset behind that? Uh, this, this, uh, so much of my work, I want to have this feeling of like uh, it being celebratory or a celebration okay. of the people mm -hmm. represented. I think that comes through in the color palette. Um, it's also about staying connected to my identity as being a Bahamian person. I don't live in mm -hmm. the Bahamas. I spend time, a lot of time home, but um, through my work is how I also continue to maintain a connection to home. And mm -hmm. I think through the color pa palette, the patterns that I use in the fabric, it really reflects like a very, um, to me, over, like a very Caribbean aesthetic and very also specifically Bahamian uh, mm -hmm. aesthetic in the work. And I think that's something that can be a universal connector for people. Uh, color, I think the bright color palette too inspires a kind of joy in seeing the work. Um, and um, it's, it's uplifting in a certain, in a certain kind of way. Well, I know the producer loved them because she likes colors. Big time colors. <laughs> Thank you, producer. Yeah. Cool. So now, um, looking at these 
creations. That's the best word I can use. Yes, creations. What drives your meditation you know, to come up with these creations? What, when, when somebody is, because I'm looking at it from the point of view, let's say you have young budding artists out there who's trying to figure out how to maybe not gone off to school and got formally trained and all that kind of stuff yet. How would they approach doing, uh, producing pieces like this? Uh, from a mindset a point question. of view. From a mindset point of view. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a, that's a very hard question because it's so individual for each person. Mm -hmm. Like how we find inspiration and where we find it. Um, a lot of times for me, I won't say a lot of times. Sometimes there's like uh, there's this moment of inspiration. I feel it in my body. It's something mm -hmm. that is moving me to want to create and mm -hmm. do this thing. And um, um, I feel like I enter a kind of state when I can access that energy and use it to create art, um, which is a beautiful moment for me. And it's always uh, a joy and a pleasure to work in that way. But more mm -hmm. often than not, it's really just showing up to do the work, experimentation. Um, sometimes it's not like, oh, I, I'm not, you can't always wait for this. Um, you can't always wait for this kind of they moment of go. creativity mm -hmm. or to, to hit you. Uh, sometimes you have to go out and kind of find that yourself. And I do that mm -hmm. through experimenting, um, thinking about different ideas. What does this pattern look like on top of that pattern? Um, I think a good way to pursue it is just to be really, really think about what, what is your unique perspective? Like, what do you have to add to this uh, conversation that um, maybe people are talking about, but not from your specific perspective? Or maybe mm -hmm. people aren't talking about it yet. And how can you start that conversation? And um, I think you have to have a kind of honesty. I find, yeah. this is just my approach anyway. Sure. I find the works mm -hmm. I'm most attracted to or the works that draw me in the most uh, from artists are from like this genuine kind of place of wanting to um, explore something in their lives. Mm -hmm. uh, the work is personal and um, it's 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 real. It's not something that just uh, they just kind of fabricated out of nowhere. It's uh, mm -hmm. really connected to who they are and to their lives. And I think that's the most interesting uh, artworks to me. The artworks that tell a, a real story. Mm -hmm. Yes, and Karen was saying these these are very beautiful um, pieces. So. Oh, gorgeous, sorry. Um, she says gorgeous. Can Thank you, down Karen. Your words, yes. <laughs> and so when we look at the pieces and, and moving forward, like Karen is saying, do a lot of young persons and um, look at art and look, they look at it from the point of view that, it, okay, it need, they need to make money. I mean, I know everybody needs money to eat, but how do you approach it? Is do you have to look at money as a, a driver or you look at it for solving a problem or to make a connection? Um, what would what, what you find to be successful when it comes back and returns for pieces that might have been most successful for you financially? How did you start with those? Was it? Hmm. You know, it's a good question because around the hmm. arts, we always have to think about um, the money part of it like how are you going mm -hmm. to actually survive mm -hmm. um for me i uh don't come from a family that has a lot of money uh, mm -hmm. my parents helped me as best as they could through through college my dad passed away in my last uh semester of mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. thank you of my undergraduate degree and um you know i was really like that was a huge expense for my family. So I was really mm -hmm. here, like taking like full responsibility and care of myself, like financially. I didn't have, mm -hmm. um, I didn't have a lot of fallback in a sense, like something goes wrong. I have a place to go to be like, you know, can I have right. this money or that money to pay rent this month? Um, so it was always a big part of my thinking. And for a lot of the time I uh, worked 
what non art related jobs to support my practice. Mm-hmm. I really only started art um, in a full time capacity in um, October of 2020, really. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, prior to that, I think I made a, I knew from, because I did my associate's degree at UB, and I knew mm-hmm. from that time that art's going to be a part of my life forever. I started. I started, and then it was just like, uh, you know, no matter what, if what, if this is my primary source of income or not, it's going to be a big right. part of my life. And I figured out ways yeah. to be able to kind of fund my practice in that sense by trying to find a job where I, you know, didn't have to work so much that I still didn't have time to make. Uh, if right. my uh, visual art wasn't fully, fully supporting me. So that was a part of how I approached it. So even though I was working, I continued in my professional practice of creating art, exhibiting an exhibition. And that's how I, uh, through doing that work, that's how I connected with my current gallery representation, um, Claire mm-hmm. Oliver Gallery in New York. That's when thing, everything really, really shifted for me to be able okay. to pursue this as a, a full-time, awesome. yeah. yeah, pursue it mm-hmm. full-time. Awesome. Cool. And so now when we look at the pieces also, um, ironically, uh, your work is very colorful and bright, but you speak of um, in terms of making this connection with the blackness. Now, is this blackness the color black, the light black light and light dark black or symbolism black as in black people um yeah explain the Mm -hmm. idea of um uh blackness as a part of our identity and what that Mm -hmm. means um to be uh and in my sense in, in my perspective from the perspective of being a black woman to explore explore this idea of um blackness and womanhood Right. And so from the womanhood point of view, also, the, those two things are very dominant in, in the works that you're doing right now. And do you get to parallel that with any social activities? Or when I say social, I don't mean going out partying type thing, but things that's happening in, in, in society in terms of world events or what have you. Yeah, my work is very, um, I, as a person, I'm, I am, my work is still quite academic in nature. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. I study a lot. I write and read a lot um, uh, I, about my work. Um, generally for exhibitions, uh, I'm often very mm-hmm. hands-on with the writing that comes out around my work and what that means. Um, so thinking about my work in like a socio-political context and what it means, I just thought about how much suffering we mm. see inflicted upon black people everywhere. Mm-hmm. Right. We have to, cons- we, we, those images are like forced upon us. Really. We consume them regularly and mm-hmm. it affects you. Um, you see yourself, you see yourself, you see yourself reflected in that moment. Mm-hmm. And um, mm-hmm. it, it stays with you. And I thought about my work as like a counter, a counter side to that. If mm-hmm. we could see this real, um, if we could behold this kind of trauma and it have these negative effects on us, and if we see people represented with love and we see them represented with care, mm-hmm. um, what kind of effect does that have on us? Does it produce joy? Is it a form of healing? And right. that's kind of what I want to explore in my work. Yeah, because you seem to be a very joyful person and energetic and, and the like. And so uh, I'm thinking that you you would draw on those things and then in your work you're presenting it in in a positive life so people can see those images in a productive and positive way versus just what society might throw there in the media all the time. Mm-hmm. Is that cool? Yeah, I, that's, that's absolutely right. I, I do, I, I'm a joyful person, but um, I've also come to this place from experiencing mm-hmm. a lot of loss in my life. Right. Um, losing both of my parents to cancer 
Um, mm-hmm. My dad first in 2016, and then my mom passed away in 2020. Uh, my, me and my family, mm-hmm. we've been through, we've been through a lot. Yeah. Um, that's just, you know, that's just a small part of everything we've um, experienced. And um, it's, it's hard to be like, how can I be, how can I still find and experience joy when you're right. also, when it's also like, you know, alongside so much loss and sadness. So this is where the exploration is for me too. And how the work Mm -hmm. can be a part of my um, healing and how I can use it to be a part of my parents' uh, legacy as well. Right. Awesome, awesome stuff. Cool. Well, right now we're going to go on to the break and come way back after two seconds, a hop, skip and a jump. And we'll pay some piper, as we say. So you've been listening to something to think about with Dale Happy Nose, and we have Geo Swaby all the way from up there in the north climate where it's nice and warm. She carries the two for two where she goes. So, Madam Producer, we'll be right back. Sammy's Chicken. There's nothing like it. Behind every scoop, lick, and savor is a smile and memory being made or reminisced. Whether you're at work, out with family on a Sunday, or have friends visiting, flavor will meet expectations in our 32-ounce container for only $10 if you're having a special event as well. Exotic flavors ranging from sour soft to Guinness is definitely worthwhile. Welcome back to Something to Think About with Dale Happy Knowles. And we're here speaking with the lovely Geo Swaby, all the way from up north Toronto, enjoying the climate, the warm weather, powder, the snow, and all the goodies that was going on early in the year. Welcome back. Thank you. Thank you. Good. So Miriam Webster, the, the person who was, uh, wrote that dictionary book and she defines work as saying it is the sustained physical and mental effort to overcome obstacles and achieve an objective or result. That's one of our definitions. So now when we look at your to-do, um, we have Labor Day coming up. And Labor Day in the Bahamas represents a very painful journey that there is overcome and we're growing as a developing nation from strength to strength. You have found a way to translate that in your work, that work, and you talked about some of the pains before the break, it's really um, radiating something beautiful that um, Karen says is gorgeous, some other person says it's supernatural, and they're like, how is it that we are able to translate that. 
what what is what what gives you I mean we know about the technical skills that you learn and stuff like that in class but it, to me it takes a commitment it takes a choice to decide that you're going to make your work not laborious but something a beautiful melody or with a great output Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's, uh, it's a, that's a complicated kind of question because I do still see, I mean, there is a, a great labor in the kind of work that mm -hmm. I, uh, I do. There's a lot of physical labor in creating these, um, in creating these artworks. Uh, but I think, uh, I think for me, I really have been on a journey of figuring out how to live life in such a way that uh, I can do the, the I want to do work that's fulfilling to me. Mm -hmm. um, okay. I want to be uh, satisfied with my life mm -hmm. day to day. Not necessarily to say I want to suffer for the next five years and then, you know, the next five years after that will be great. I want right. to understand how every day I wake up, there's going to be days that are hard and busy and, um, you know, perhaps not uh, super enjoyable, but mm -hmm. I want overall to feel a kind of contentment and happiness in my life. And how can I approach that? And I think that's through the work that I'm doing is uh, one of the ways that I achieve that. I think I talked a lot about my encounters with loss and how uh, earlier but that shifted my perspective so, so much on life to be mm -hmm. just that, you know, you have to enjoy today because you really, really don't know how things could change for you in, in a minute. Mm -hmm. um, so while you have the time at this moment, it's important to figure out how can I um, live in this moment for myself today and for the people around me. And that's how I wanted to approach with this work. And I think that's why my work is so based in connecting with others and this expression of love, because it's all about um, being able to uh, say the things or do the things that you uh, that you should do in the time that you have and um, being able to prioritize what's important to you, most important to you in life. Mm -hmm. Cool. And so that energy, that warmth, that expression um radiates in the work and so people are liking the work what what types of person you find in this is really drawing to your work as the audience yeah mm. uh well i i think generally i'd say overall the work feels um universal in a sense that so many different people have connected to this work like I okay. have more recently as you know restrictions through COVID are lessening mm -hmm. I can actually go to openings and exhibitions where my work um, is on view and have conversations with people and I've met and connected with all different kinds of people who see all different kinds of things reflected in the work um, but I consider my primary audience to be black people and especially mm -hmm. black women and girls and I think those are the people who most connect with the work because they see versions of themselves reflected. Um, maybe this portrait is not specifically of them, but they right. can see um, parts of themselves reflected in the work. Or um, for, for other people, they may see uh, reflections of their mother or their sister or daughter or someone who they know and love. And I think mm -hmm. that's where um, the big connector kind of comes in with the... Um, artist and viewer relationship there's also a lot of people who connect to the work through my stories of learning to sew from my mom and mm -hmm. this passing down of knowledge a lot of people share with me their connections to textile and um, um working with fabrics and thread and that's always a really enjoyable experience for me right and so you talk about the textile and the fabric and the, fr and the thread and and the seven foot um, creations. Um, did I read somewhere that you also did performance art? Mm -hmm. okay, I did. So. Uh, I have done performance works before. 
here in, well, I used to live in Vancouver. So a lot okay. of it took place in Vancouver where um, they were still textile based in the sense that I created like this wearable kind of sculpture um, in, a, in a way, this mm -hmm. wearable art. And I uh, kind of put it on and I had my, um, my partner, Steven, uh, record the experience of people reacting and um, mm -hmm. connecting and relating to the to my uh, the outfit I was wearing and the experience and their mm -hmm. experience of it. Um, for me, that was an experience of understanding um, how because uh, Vancouver. First of all, I'll say about Vancouver: there's hardly any black people there, which was mm -hmm. a huge difference from obviously living in the Bahamas. And I experienced this, I felt very other, other there. Um, there was a lot of times when I wanted to explore this idea of feeling like an alien in a certain space. And I think wearing this, like, wearing this, like, art piece, this sculpture, this outfit uh, was like this outward representation of how I felt on the inside and how I felt mm -hmm. people kind of were relating to me. Cool. I don't know if it's in Vancouver, or, but I think there was a set of people who went to up in the Canada, which were black, and now they're no longer there, but they were the first set of people in that part. Uh, I can't remember where it is exactly right now. Mm. Yeah, so that might be something that you might want to look up. Yeah, that sounds super yeah. interesting. I'm going to write cool. that down on my giant piece of paper. Oh, gee. <laughs> yeah. So now... How do you, I don't know how should I say this, when, when you do those performance pieces, they are in what type of space? Is it in the public space, in a private space, in the gallery, in the, in the museums? Uh, so these, these were in public space. I just uh, walked outside my house. I went into mm -hmm. the train station. Um, I went to like a grocery store, a mall. I just walked around outside and uh, on sidewalks. Um, so they all took took place mostly outdoors in public space. Yeah, and so then the people would have come to you and either try to touch the material or sit mm -hmm. there and watch you for a period of time. Or it was know, mostly a lot of people. Uh, it was like an interruption. Oh, to their okay. mm -hmm. regular day like it would there would be something that was uh they might stop and want to take a photo no mm -hmm. one physically interacted with me no one entered the space to try to physically right. interact but okay. it was a lot of um kind of this like staring really right. mm -hmm. observing trying to figure out what was happening yeah. mm -hmm. inquisitive yeah exactly cool so now when we look back now, everybody, how better their portfolio is big or small, have some, some pieces that they favor uh, and so forth. And so what you might be most satisfied with in terms of achieving your goal of this love, lang love, love language, this love letter, right? Mm -hmm. Which pieces mm. did you feel replicates that the most? That is a hard question. That's a very, very hard question. Um, it's like uh, choosing one of your kids. Oh boy! Don't tell I me. I choose. Could... <laughs> 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 Don't tell me you could choose. Mm -hmm. um, I can choose the two. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! Okay. Um, no, it's it's hard for me because I make such a special connection with each person through the work. Mm -hmm. And it's so individual, uh, that experience. And also I um I don't leave I don't let work doesn't leave my studio until I'm, you know, one hundred percent happy with it. Mm -hmm. Um I reach a place when I feel this is exactly the way that I wanted it to be, or I get this feeling of feeling like, yes, this is exactly how the work should be. Um, I, um, am very invested in my technique, making sure the work mm -hmm. is technically very sound. And, um, I try to push myself in that sense with each, each new work that I create 
Mm -hmm. um, I can see my technical skills expanding, but then I look back really fondly on some of the ones that I made because they are like a snapshot of where I was at that point in time. And they are so connected to that different point in my life. And it's, it's hard to choose any work in a sense. Like I, I honestly don't know if I, I honestly don't think that I, uh, don't think that I can, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, but Sorry. I meant more in terms of what, <laughs> what, uh, not to say um, that mommy or daddy or, or, or Annie Susie or Joe was more favorable, but in terms of the work itself and expressing what you wanted to express, which one you felt gratified. But that's fine. No, it, we go with that. Okay, good. So, <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, in terms of pieces now in terms of uh, what you're going to be creating because I see you have a lot of images on the wall behind you and the tape you know I, I think of the tape because I see my mom always have tape that she sews and so forth is that going to be a part of your your future the actual uh yeah, um, these are sketches. Outfits these, and stuff. Mm -hmm. These are work that I've already made. Um, so these are all pieces that are pretty much in existence or things that I've drawn from that are in existence. Mm -hmm. um, I just finished a really, I just got back actually from opening my first museum solo show in, okay. uh, at the Museum of Fine Arts St. Petersburg in Florida. Uh, so that was such a huge undertaking over this last two years mm -hmm. i was so focused on getting this work um finished i was also working toward my mfa at the same time i'm um, oh, finishing up my master's degree and i also had an exhibition for that work um and i think right now i'm in the period of reflecting on that experience i mm -hmm. think for artists and for people in general uh sometimes you can't just continue to um, create, create forever. At some point, you have to take a step back and, uh, and think about this experience you've had with the work. I mm -hmm. am really reflecting on it. I'm thinking about what is my next step and the next stages into moving forward. And I think that's where I am right now in this period of trying to focus on that. I think I am certainly going to continue forward into uh, the space of creating larger size works. Mm -hmm. I've been working into a larger space. My um, most recent works are um, are uh, larger than any of the others. I did one that was uh, three foot, sorry, three figures on one uh, work, which is my first one to have multiple figures. Okay. Um, that work was about 10 feet, 10 feet by seven feet. Uh, so I think I want to keep continue to explore in this larger space of multiple putting together multiple figures on the same, on on the canvas and seeing how they can interact with one mm -hmm. another. Right. And so your work, do you plan for it to be a a teaching tool for anybody for any of the younger artists? I mean, you 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 talk about yourself being old, but I mean, at thirty thirty ain't old, right? But. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's it's not old. It's not old. Um, I think I am in a place to be able to share some of you know the knowledge. I'm I'm still a student in every sense of the word, um, but I think that uh, I have some knowledge to to give and to share, and um, I think that my work could be a way to a way to access that and a way to do that. I have a big family. I have um, seven nieces and nephews, about to be eight nieces and nephews. My mm -hmm. sister's for due to give birth at the end of June. Um, and I um, I see a lot of the future in them, mm -hmm. the future of art, the future of the Bahamas, really, mm -hmm. and of our family and legacy. And I think about passing down and how I do pass down this potential and knowledge to them. Um, I, in, in a lot of ways, I am the first person in my family to do so much of the things that I'm doing. And hopefully it's, 
is a map or an indication in a way that it's possible for them to do to do that too. Right. Awesome. And so you said that you you have basically stepping out um, from being under the umbrella of student into the full time life of art and producing art and planning art and knowing when to push and when to sit back and reflect and, and the like. How, how you t- you're always making this love, love letter connection with other people, but how has it been in reverse on you? How does it, how has it co- help you in your identity, growth and what have you? Um, I think my work has helped me to explore um, so much in my life. I think where, where I am with my work is almost always a reflection of some personal journey that I'm on in my life. And mm-hmm. I really feel like the space where I am right now is learning how to love more and better. Mm-hmm. And I'm exploring that through my work. So in the same way that I want to extend and express this love, I also feel and receive it through uh, through this process of connecting and creating the portrait of this person. Um, a lot of my work as well as self-portraiture. So I'm including hmm. myself okay. in this practice of the, of the love letter, uh, celebrating a journey of coming as far as I have and um, what's yet to come. And... Uh, celebrating myself for uh, everything that's happened, mm-hmm. for everything that I've been through, and how I've come to come to be at this point now. Right, and in your your um, writings, you said that it's a for a positive force for connection and closeness. And so, what was your comment on that in terms of what, what you've seen so far? Uh, so there's a few layers. So there's the first layer okay. of this, mm-hmm. this connection between myself and this person I'm representing. Right. Um, we have this beautiful connection of creating this work. Um, in a lot of ways, we are creating it together. I'm using their image. Um, they're choosing their own outfit. They are, you know, moving and poses in a way that is reflective of who they are. And I have the honor to be able to represent them. So there's that Mm -hmm. level of connection and um, increasing that closeness to people who are already quite close to me in my life. Mm -hmm. But there's this other, another layer of um, connection when the work goes into a gallery or into a museum space and viewers, I'm thinking especially of black people Mm-hmm. Coming to see this work and seeing a reflection of themselves. So there's also that moment of connection when the, this, you know, um, in histories and in, in the art world and museums and gallery spaces, Black people have been historically excluded, like right. in, in a, a very intentional way. Mm-hmm. Um, representations of Black people as well as art created by Black people. So I'm doing both of those things and uh, I hope that this has an impact on um, the Black viewer seeing my work and seeing a version of themselves represented in the work or even perhaps through um, my uh, experience of being an artist and creating uh, creating this artwork. Yeah, but you know, I also see that there is, at least from the pieces that I looked at, that there's opportunity for persons who are of, um, of different um, hues and colors and stuff like that to be attracted because your images is not, I don't want to say stark, but it, they, they're inviting. And so people can now, who might not know of the culture and the ways, see images in a different light. And mm-hmm. maybe that they get some enlightenment from that or want to be inquisitive to even want to find out more before they might not have even wanted to. And you talked about Vancouver not having a, a black uh, population, say. Maybe people there, when they stopped and stared, they look at the work and say, hey, this is interesting. I need to find more about this. Voices having the fear 
because you know there's always this imagery in the public domain where people get put fear when they see a, a black image, so forth. Mm-hmm. Cool. Yeah, I I mean I relate to that in a sense, but there's also the um, the part of you know I didn't grow up with a lot of watch seeing a lot of um, black people in art or even in media in general. Right. I related to people of different races all the time mm-hmm. as being heroes or being um, someone I connected with. So there's potential for people to relate to the black women I'm representing in the same way. Right. Um, you don't have to be black to connect to the work. I think there's connections possible for all people. Uh, but the work is, you know, I think so cemented in blackness that there is certainly a special um, connection and um, you make a great point about that. Cool. So now, next steps for Geo Sway B. You know, um, Dominique is in France today. Tomorrow, who knows where he's going to be. <laughs> you, you seem to want to be in a stationary spot for a period of time, but as artists, art's going to take you wherever uh, it goes. What is your vision for that? Uh, I have a lot. I have a lot uh, coming up. Uh, so I mentioned my exhibition that just opened. It actually mm-hmm. travels to uh, the Art Institute Chicago next okay. April. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's certainly coming up on the agenda. Um, and uh, I have some other fairs I'm doing um, on Title Fair this coming December in Miami. Um, there's lots of exciting things around art. I am, mm-hmm. I am like you say, when we started, just like I said, I, I might be a little bit boring of a person in the sense that mm. I, I, I don't know about that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I like, I, I like to stay, I like peace. I like to stay home. I like to be, you know, um, that's just, that's just how I am. But I also do enjoy the travel aspect of it, being able to see how the work like where the work can go and how it can travel all around the world um, mm-hmm. and the different people it can connect to. So that's, that is something I'm really excited about. Awesome. Awesome. Now for you in terms of where does this craft go from here in terms of what is needed next? What we talk about the art that you already have lined up. But what is the next level as a whole that you would go to when you take, grab everything that you've already done and meditate on it and decipher and reflect the words you use, and then you take it to the next step? What, what was... What I, think, I think, I think um, in my next stages, I want to continue to trust myself. I want to continue to trust that the work that I make uh, I want to continue to trust that the work that I make is going to be fulfilling to me. Mm-hmm. And the way that I achieve that is through making sure that my practice has a level of honesty in the sense that uh, it's it's truly an interesting exploration for me. I'm not just creating work that people have previously responded well to. It's actually right. what I am interested in making and um, thinking about who I'm making the work for and who gets to see it and enjoy it. Um, so I think I want to continue to approach from that from that uh, angle. But I think overall, what I want to be able to achieve is this sense of balance in my life and, and work. Mm-hmm. Um, being able to enjoy my work as much as I enjoy my life is where I want to is where I want to head into in 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 my next phase, being able to have that um, balance. I feel like I was tipped in the scale a lot more toward the work aspect in the last uh, year or so with uh, finishing school and everything else that's been happening. And I hope to be able to, I think I, I can overall have, um, I can see big kind of, steps and improvements in my work and practice as I have that in my own life. 
Mm-hmm. Awesome. And so as we wrap up now, then um, what would be, well, what would you like to see academia, the government, the private sector in the Bahamas do to help people have greater opportunities in, in the art space? Um, I mean, more funding overall. We uh, okay. Bohemian artists are incredible. For the size of the country that we come from, mm -hmm. the amount of Bohemian artists working on this international scale, you know, in, in museums, having these incredible exhibitions. Um, you know, Zavar Strong working with NASA. He was in the Venice Biennale. We have right. so much incredible um, Bohemian artists. And um, I feel that we really don't get the support and recognition until it's after the fact that you've already left home and you've achieved this kind of international success elsewhere. We have a very uh, close-knit, supportive art community at home. Like, um, I've had so much support from um, other artists and people mm -hmm. working in the arts at home uh, that from uh, such an early stage in my career as an artist, but you don't necessarily feel that uh, from a government perspective and from, I think, the general public. I think that there's so many talent, there's so much talent to nurture. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that if we could uh, regard it, so many countries are thinking about culture and art as right. a part of a big, uh, of of why people would want to visit and come to experience. Um, and I think that we have a lot of missed opportunities in that sense as Bahamian people. And um, uh, we need more space for artists. We need more studio space. Mm -hmm. um, artists need money to be able to create the works that they make. And I think that um, having that support could be the difference between a career that takes off and one that remains stagnant. Right. Awesome. Well, that is great stuff. So as we say, what would you like to say to public out there? I asked you plenty of questions. <laughs> you what, did. Would you like to, what would you like to say to them? All good questions. I had a, it was all good questions. I oh, I just like <laughs> Um, I guess I'd like to say thank you. Uh, I felt a tremendous support from Bahamian people, so many people I didn't know um, mm. uh, that, that I haven't connected with, just like you have reached out to me to start to form that connection, to send right. their congratulations. Um, and my gratitude is overwhelming. I'm so appreciative. One thing about Bahamian people, we really support. We really mm. show up. Um, I really feel that um, I, I feel that so much that I've gotten that um, I feel the love and I want to be able to return that and just express my overall gratitude to um, just express my overall gratitude to the Bahamas and Bahamian people for how much they have um, sent their love and support toward me. That's awesome. Great. It's always good to express those things when especially when you're artists, you know, and you could the next thing I'll see you down on some um, canvas, maybe 14 by whatever, instead of just a 10, because I know how you all go. Your, your minds <laughs> keep expanding. I mean, especially if you're anything like Dominic's one, it doesn't stop. It just keeps growing and growing and growing and growing. Mm -hmm, but we like to thank you kindly for joining us and accepting our invite to come on something to think about with, with myself. And we... Wish you nothing but success in your endeavors and all your growth and look forward to all the great things. And I'm sure when Dominic has finished what he's doing right now, then he's going to send me a mail on questions. How did the show go? How did it? Did it, did it stuff here. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Awesome. It was a pleasure. Um, I had a great time. Thank you for inviting me and thank you for having me. It was, a, it was really, really wonderful to connect. Great. Awesome. Folks out there, thank you also. And if you want to listen to more shows, um, just click on the links that we have. We don't take the shows down. They're there for everybody to, to learn from and listen to and, and, and the like and have fun with them. Um, share them, share them, share them, share them, share them. You know, put G on the map. Make her bigger than life. You know, she got to be bigger than Amos. You know, kind of thing. <laughs>
And don't forget to su su subscribe and, and go for it. So, Madam Bedusa, thank you kindly. Thank you to you. Thank you. Enjoyed the show? Then subscribe to us for more educational and inspirational content. Ring the bell so you never miss a show. Let's change the narrative, 242.